the flying clipper ships of America's merchant marine of the air, the swift flying merchant marine, which speed trade and travel between the Americas and across the oceans to the far continents, have by their swift flight brought within easy range whole new worlds of travel wonders. Nassau in the Bahamas is now as close to your home as your Sunday afternoon picnic ground. Nassau is but overnight from half the United States and but 70 swift minutes from Miami. Pan American Airways' fleet of more than 150 flying clipper ships fly regularly across the skyways from the West Indies and Central America to and around the South American continent, across the vast Pacific to China or Singapore, across the South Seas to Australasia, across the Atlantic to Europe, and over the South Atlantic to Africa. The spectacular view of the city of Miami from the air is our first treat on this wonder cruise of the sky. Here, one of America's aerial gateways to the southern Americas is spread out beneath our silver wings, a treat reserved for those who fly. Then over Miami Beach, America's Riviera, with its scores of palatial hotels and beautiful estates set amid formal gardens and picturesque lagoons, its long stretches of white sandy beach framed by the warm blue water of the Gulf Stream. In these few minutes, you change from your everyday world of sweltering summer heat or biting winter cold, of worry and bustle and confusion, into a completely new world of rest and recreation, with sights and scenes spread below your window for you to look upon. There is nothing to match the smooth, effortless flight of the silver clipper ships that speed so swiftly but effortlessly through the sky. Soon we're over the Gulf Stream, a gigantic river in the ocean that washes the shores of both Europe and Africa before completing the course of the Gulf. Flecked with tiny white caps, the blue waters of the Gulf Stream soon pass beneath our silver wings, and friendly little clouds brush the windows of our flying clipper ship. Here in the semi-tropic air, beautiful cloud formations are born, developing into gigantic white billows of spectacular shapes. In less than one magic hour, the great coral reefs surrounding the Bahamas come into view. Here is another unforgettable sight only for those who fly, for in no other way can the glorious colorings of these jewel-like coral formations be appreciated. Coming closer upon the islands, their brilliant coral bays, bright sandy beaches, and lush green semi-tropical verdure form a great tapestry of color. The Bahama Islands viewed from the sky are colorful as opals. Nassau is a little island city tucked away in the ocean. Its palm-fringed harbor looks like a huge emerald set in a turquoise sea. Only 70 minutes ago, we were in Miami, and now with the speed of a magic carpet, we have been transplanted to these languorous, sunny isles where a glorious holiday awaits. Pan American's flying clipper ships bring a never-ending stream of travelers to these picturesque islands. From the sweltering summer heat or the freezing winter temperatures of the mainland, Nassau offers an ideal all-year climate which has made it one of the world's favorite vacation spots. His Royal Highness, the Duke of Windsor, Governor of the Bahamas, is a frequent visitor at Pan American's airport at Oaks Field in Nassau. He greets an old friend, Mr. George Hall, Under Secretary of State for the Colonies. Just two days before, Mr. Hall had boarded a Pan American clipper at Lisbon 5,000 miles away across the Atlantic. It was the fastest time ever made by anyone traveling from Europe to Nassau. The Bahamas were discovered by Columbus in 1492, claimed by Spain, taken by England, and constantly plundered by pirates. Fort Fincastle played its historic part when Nassau was a center of attacks from freebooters and pirates who preyed upon the treasure ships of old Spain. Everywhere there is color, in the matchless beauty of the sky and in the ever-changing hues of the sea. So beautiful is the island's coloring and scenery that it is like an artist's landscape come to life. A thousand shades of green and blue shimmering in the sun, gentle surf breaking lazily on shores of coral sand, and water so crystal clear that one can watch the exotic tropical fish swim about the warm coral pools. Native life along the waterfront and marketplace is fascinating to watch.
Here, sturdy little native boats from all the surrounding islands bring their wares to market. Fish, sponges, lumber, fruit and vegetables comprise their main produce, but all types of native articles and handicraft are to be found. For many native families, these boats are homes, and happy homes at that, for the rugged, contented natives are born to the sea. Weaving mats, baskets, and hats of sisal and coconut straw is a native industry which is rapidly growing in demand and popularity, even for far-off mainland markets. Nassau straw hats are of very fine quality. Many of them are shipped to all parts of the United States. Others are worn locally. Madam Queen, herself in person. The city retains an atmosphere of languorous charm. Its quaint old streets are restfully different from the metropolitan atmosphere and customs and living pace to which we have been accustomed. Along the many interesting and picturesque streets, the absence of heavy automobile traffic is most apparent. Everyone enjoys being driven about in the old-fashioned Victoria, drawn by steeds that are in no more hurry than you are. On back picturesque roads or lanes, you will discover the lush coloring of these tropical islands, crowned in the brilliance of the Royal Poinciana's, or flame tree as it is sometimes called. This parasol of blazing vermilion is a fine example of the Poinciana. The individual blossoms look like bright red orchids. Many varying shades of oleander grow in great profusion. Bougainvillea adds another bright tint to the flowery rainbow of the city. One of the most interesting of all the flowers is the passion flower, so named because its unique formation and purple coloring suggest the passion of Christ. Then too, its stamen is shaped like the cross and the petals represent the apostles. Excellent and cosmopolitan hotels add to one's comfort and pleasure. The British Colonial Hotel is renowned for its comforts and complete resort facilities, for its magnificent setting in harbor front gardens overlooking the sea. Another of Nassau's luxurious hotels is the Montague. Here one can find sumptuous living combined with a policy of guest entertainment. Just above the central part of the city, overlooking the business district and harbor, is Government House, the residence of His Excellency the Governor, at present the home of the Duke and Duchess of Windsor. Nassau can well boast of its fine police force, always spick and span in their white starched uniforms. Often the visitor has a chance to see His Royal Highness the Duke of Windsor and the Duchess of Windsor. On the steps of Christ Church Cathedral, his Royal Highness reviews the police and Home Defense Corps. Nowhere in the world are beaches more inviting than in the calm Bahamas. Here at Paradise Beach, pink coral sands are brilliant in the tropic sunshine. Cool trade winds keep the air delightful. The tranquil sea of turquoise blue invites you to bathe. Here Ponce de Leon sought the fountain of youth. Here you will discover it in these sparkling waters. 
sip and lunch in the shade of the palms. Dip into the crystal sea where white-tipped breakers softly roll on beaches of coral sand. Here is a delightful resort where swimming is sport 12 months of the year. Every day is sports day in the Isles of June, and its many beautiful harbors, bays, and inlets, warmed by the friendly Gulf Stream, make sailing one of the most popular sports. A little cannon announces the start of a race. Races are held by the different sailing clubs every week. These are flamingo-class boats. Boys and girls learn to handle a boat almost as soon as they learn the alphabet. And the calm, lovely seas which embrace the islands of the Bahamas are dotted with white sails on almost any day of the year. By mid-morning, golf addicts are off to the 18-hole championship course at the Bahamas Country Club. Hours seem like minutes in Nassau. Days are crowded with so many things to do. It is hard to realize that only yesterday we were in the midst of freezing weather in Chicago, Minneapolis, or Denver. Perhaps if the seasons were reversed, we were sweltering with the heat in New York, Boston, or Pittsburgh. Now, by the wonder of America's great skyliners and the flying clipper ships of Pan American Airways, we have been transplanted overnight to Nassau, to this land of brilliant sunny days and still moonlit nights. The 19th hole, always popular after a turn around the course. Undoubtedly the most thrilling sport in the islands is water skiing. Actually, water skiing is a safe sport and easy to learn. Visitors to the Bahamas like zipping along behind a speedboat. Before long, they are ready to try more difficult stunts. Captain D.R.C. Rutherford, who invented water skiing on the continent and introduced it first in the Western Hemisphere at Nassau, is, of course, Nassau's greatest expert. No wonder it has become one of the most popular aquatic sports in the States. Notice the writhing, leaping waves behind the boat and imagine how difficult it is to keep footing in that surging tempest. Here Rutherford introduces another stunt, slalom water skiing, making difficult turns between anchored flags which mark a zigzag course. A miscalculation in the rough water boiling in the wake of the speedboat and a spill into the ocean would result. But practice makes perfect in this thrilling, breathtaking sport. Game fishermen cruise in these waters, famous for its sport fishing. Strong tackle, strong arms, and stout heart can battle with blue marlin, tuna, swordfish, bonefish, and countless other fighters. Joy to the heart of the deep water fishermen. The bait used to lure the wary marlin must be skillfully and carefully prepared so that the large hook is entirely concealed within the body of the fish and sewed on strong enough to prevent its coming off the hook when the powerful marlin strikes. A marlin strikes and the thrills commence. The marlin swims away with the bait so fast that the line reels out with terrific speed and force. The fisherman must give several quick but steady jerks on the line to set the hook firmly.
It's a tough job reeling in one of these sporty monsters of the deep, but it's joy to the heart of the fisherman. After two hours of terrific struggle, the huge marlin is tired out and is slowly brought toward the boat by the equally tired fishermen. Thirteen miles across the island from Nassau is the sleepy seaside village of Adelaide. Half hidden in the lush flower-sprinkled greenery, the quaint village pursues its old way of life, virtually untouched by the modern way of life so close by. Here are the ruins of plantation homes and slave huts, where the grandparents of Adelaide's population once worked in bondage. The contented, carefree Negroes have a cordial welcome for the interested visitor who comes their way. Indeed, these children of the sun are a definite part of the atmosphere which belongs only to the Bahamas. Many of the natives now pursue a 250-year-old craft, which has recently become very popular and profitable, the manufacture of shell and fish scale jewelry. The shells are painted with dye to heighten the beauty of the pieces and to create colors varied enough to match natural flowers. Under the nimble fingers of Bahamian craft workers, the shells are tied together with silk floss to make buds and clusters. Fish scales add their part to the clever and beautiful designs. Held together by fine silver wire, they form tiny petals of the most delicate flowers. Many of the biggest and smartest stores in the United States and Canada are now featuring displays of buds, dress clips, sprays, earrings, bracelets, necklaces and headdresses made of these shells and fish scales from the Bahamas. The tiara worn by a lovely Bahamian miss is made of tiny seashells which look like pearls. It is similar to one worn by the Duchess of Windsor when she appears at public social functions. Sponges have always played an important part in the native Bahamian industry. All kinds, shapes, and sizes are exported to markets all over the world. They have their local use, too. A real sponge bath a la Nassau. The program of what to do in these tropical isles seems never ending. What a glorious vacation, just spending lazy days cruising among these small islands. Just a short sail from Nassau is Treasure Island, a popular subject for artists and photographers. Boats visiting the island enter through a narrow cut in the rock. Overlooking the entrance is a tower, replica of one of the old pirate towers which were built by the pirate leaders to guard their hideout. Here we are reminded of the period when the skull and crossbones fluttered over the island, days when the terrible pirate Blackbeard reigned supreme in these parts of the sea. An old fort recalls the days of Spanish conquistadores and swashbuckling pirates, grim landmarks of these reckless and romantic days. Walls covered with drawings of Blackbeard grace the old pirate stronghold. Ancient pirate cannons stand guard over the rocky point where creamy surf breaks under silver spray. Old carved wooden figureheads, relics from the bows of old pirate ships, have been reclaimed and add their touch to the realism of this treasure island.
Sandy Cay is typical of the dreamy little islands which are scattered across the sapphire and emerald seas of the Bahamas. Here are never-to-be-forgotten cruises amid alluring palm-fringed isles. Near the southern end of Andros Island is a great colony of flamingos, extraordinarily beautiful birds, carefully protected by the government. One of the rarest sights which the visitor may be fortunate enough to see is a flock of these graceful birds in flight. The babies are far from graceful. It is difficult to imagine how these awkward, drab, out of proportion creatures can develop into such beautiful and colorful birds. One egg is laid in a specially built mud mound. So uniform are these mounds that they look almost man-made. The sun loses itself at the end of the day, and Nassau, drenched in gold and purple rays, bows its head to the end of another glorious day. Soft breezes dance with the graceful fronds of the palm trees, and a million moonbeams ride the singing waves along the silver-white beach. Multiply the wonders of this single short flight by a hundred, and you have some glimpse of the new travel world which these America's clipper ships have opened to you. Have you ever wished to see the Valley of Mexico, the islands of the Lower Caribbean, ancient Inca ruins and the highlands of the Andes, the gay, magnificent city of Rio de Janeiro, or the great capital of the Southern Hemisphere, Buenos Aires? These and countless other high spots are only hours away. Get acquainted with the good neighbors to the south. You too can help build hemisphere solidarity.